Hey, welcome back. So today I'll be starting the smart security camera project that I recently talked about in a previous video. So I'll first give a rundown of what I have planned and my motivations behind it. I'll be creating a Python program that will take advantage of AI and machine learning tools such as YOLO object detection so that it will only start recording when it detects a person on the camera. This program will work with any IP camera that supports the RTSP protocol, and I'll be showing how to set up your own RTSP video stream as well using a USB webcam or the Raspberry Pi camera. Now the main reason why I started this project is because I currently don't have any security cameras set up around the house, and over the past several years there's been a growing need for them. Not only are criminals stealing Amazon packages and people's mail around the neighborhood, but they're also trying to break into people's houses. In fact, over the past few months alone, there have been two instances where someone tried to open my front door, but luckily the door was locked. Also, every time I log on to the Nextdoor app, I constantly see reports and security footage of criminals trying to break into someone's house or stealing their packages. The crazy thing is that even if police catch these criminals, there's a good chance they'll be released right back into the streets because of how broken the justice system has become. Apparently this isn't just a problem here in California, but in many parts of the US. So I decided it was necessary to install a security camera that monitored my front door and the mailbox. But I didn't want to go with something like a Ring camera because of the potential privacy concerns with those products. Many people might not realize that their Ring cameras aren't just being streamed to their laptops and phones, but are also being sent to corporate servers. Even if customers opt out of the cloud features, it still doesn't guarantee that their video streams are private. Which is why I decided to design my own smart security system. So let's now begin by talking about the hardware that you'll need for this project. The Python programs I'll be developing should work with any camera that supports the RTSP protocol, which means the vast majority of these Wi-Fi enabled security cameras should work with this project. But as I just mentioned, some of these cameras such as the Ring might have privacy issues. However, there is a lot of competition in this market. So I'm sure some of these brands won't collect your data as long as you don't touch their cloud-based features. For example, after reading the reviews for this particular camera, it seems that this one should be safe as long as you don't enable any cloud features. However, I don't have any experience with these so I can't say for sure. Personally, I'll be doing a more custom solution and will be going into more detail on this in a minute. But for some people it will make more sense just to buy a ready to go outdoor camera. So feel free to get whatever makes sense for your particular situation. My setup includes a Raspberry Pi camera with a 3D printed enclosure that hangs from the front door and is able to view my front porch and mailbox through the windows at the top of the door. It has a long ribbon cable going to the Raspberry Pi that's sitting near the floor here, which is connected to my home network. In one of my previous videos, I showed how to set up your own RTSP video stream using a Raspberry Pi, and this guide will actually work for any Linux-based system including desktops and laptops. It's a great starting point for this project, but it turns out there have been a few changes over the past few months with the software I used in that guide, which means it's somewhat outdated now. So for this video, I'll be doing an updated version of this guide, and at the end, I'll show the timeline I have planned for this project. This way we can get the camera situation all squared away before moving on to the Python programs, which I'll be starting in the next video. Alright, so let's begin by going to the written tutorial on my website which has been updated with the latest steps. Since Raspberry Pis are still hard to find today, you might want to consider an alternative. The Jetson Nano and Asus Tinkerboard are two alternatives that are compatible with the Raspberry Pi camera. However, both of these options are quite expensive. 
The Libre computer board and the Orange Pi are two low cost options, with the cheaper models currently going for around 30 bucks. But neither of these are compatible with the Raspberry Pi camera, so you'll need to use a USB camera for these, which is completely fine. It all depends what you think will work in your specific situation. Any board that can run Linux should work with this project. Alternatively, another potential option would be a budget laptop, such as the $60 Evolve 3 Maestro that I've made a few videos about already. Since I used a Raspberry Pi in my previous guide, I'll use the Maestro laptop as an example today. The process is very similar as using a Raspberry Pi. So I'll first update the repositories with sudo apt update, and then install the following two packages v4l-utils, and ffmpeg. Next, I'll download MediaMTX from GitHub. MediaMTX used to be called RTSP Simple Server, and this is the biggest change that has happened since I first made my guide on this. Older Raspberry Pis will need ARMv6, while the newer ones will need either ARMv7 or ARM64v8 depending on which image you flash to your Raspberry Pi. But for laptops and desktops, you'll want to download the AMD64 version. So I'll copy and paste this command to download and extract it, but I'll change the file name to AMD64 like this. If you didn't already enter sudo apt update in the previous step, then be sure to do that first before trying to download the file. Next, you can set up auto start scripts like I did in the tutorial, but the exact steps will be different on a laptop and will depend on which distro you're using. Instead of setting up auto start script that will run every time I turn on the laptop, I'll simply enter them manually this time. First, make sure you're in the same folder where you downloaded the file to, then start the RTSP server by typing this command. Now open a new tab and leave this current one alone. Make sure not to close it. In the new tab, enter this command to start the stream, but you might want to change a few parameters first. Also notice how I'm skipping this command that sets the bitrate of the stream, since this only works with the Raspberry Pi camera. Now, I highly recommend using a webcam that supports H.264 or H.265 output. The Raspberry Pi camera and the Logitech C920 USB webcam that I currently have connected both support H.264 output, so I can use the exact same command for both cameras. If your camera doesn't support H.264 or H.265, then chances are it still can be used, but it will most likely require the video to be encoded instead of simply using the copy parameter. Encoding video on the fly can suck up a lot of system resources though, so it's best to avoid it if you can. To check if your camera supports H.264 or H.265, first type this command to list all the cameras connected to your system. You can see there's two cameras connected, the first being the Logitech C920 and the second being the laptop's built-in webcam. Usually you'll want to use the first location that's listed under the camera, so in this case I'll use video 0. Now type this command to list the available formats for that camera. Remember to change video 0 to whichever number shows up for your particular camera. You can see this camera supports three different formats with one of them being H.264. MJPEG is another format that might work without re-encoding the stream, but the image quality generally isn't very good, so I recommend using H.264 if possible. To see which resolutions and frame rates are supported, type the same command as before but add dash ext to the end. Now let's scroll up to the H.264 section, and you'll see all the resolutions and frame rates that are supported, so feel free to choose whichever one you'd like. Now I'll finally enter this long command to get the stream started so I'll copy and paste it from my website. I'll leave the resolution at 1080p and the frame rate at 30 for now, but you might want to select 720p instead 
once we get to the part where we start recording video, so you can save space on the disk. But it's up to you. Also, remember to change video zero to whatever location your camera showed up as. Finally, you can change the stream name if you'd like. By default, I have it set for my stream name, but feel free to change it to whatever you like. Alright, now the stream is up and running, so let's open up VLC to view it. Another thing I forgot to mention in the first tutorial is that not every version of VLC will work with RTSP streams. If you're trying to view the stream from a computer using Debian or Ubuntu based distros, then make sure to install the Flatpak version. If you installed it with sudo apt install vlc, then chances are it's not compatible with RTSP. So again, use the Flatpak version. Now click the media menu in the top left and go to open network stream and type the address of your stream. If viewing from a different computer, then replace localhost with the device's IP address, which is broadcasting the stream, and then push play. Now it might take a few seconds to load. But there it is. You should now be able to view your stream. And by the way, you can view this stream from multiple computers at the same time. And VLC is also available for Android and iOS, so you can view it from your phone as well. Okay, now I'll give an overview of what I have planned for my next few videos. I'll be splitting this project up into multiple parts, with each video building upon what I did in the previous one. I'll also be explaining my code in detail, so these videos will also double as Python lessons as well. In the next video, I'll be showing the first program which will have a simple motion detection feature so that it will only start recording when it detects motion. This program will be lightweight enough to run directly on low power hardware such as a Raspberry Pi or the Maestro laptop that I use today, which only has an Intel Atom CPU. The second program will be the one where I'll add object detection support so that it only starts recording when it detects a person in view, or it can be customized to detect any particular animal or object of your choice, such as a car. This version will require a desktop or laptop with a dedicated GPU to run the object detection inference tools that I'll be using. After that, I have a few more features in mind including a motion-activated nightlight, which will give me an opportunity to also talk more in depth about circuits, in case you're interested in learning more about that too. Also, I think it might be useful to add speakers for a verbal warning system that can alert the user if it detects anything suspicious. There's quite a few other smart home features that can be added too. So this will probably be a somewhat open-ended project that can be expanded more in the future. But anyway, this video is probably getting pretty long now so I'll leave it at that for today. I'll be starting the Python programming in my next video, so if you want to follow along then be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and also give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. If you have any questions or suggestions for the project, then feel free to drop a comment and let me know. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.